We're seeing a lot of activity in the multifamily space. We, we have a pretty good industrial backbone here in Louisville. So, you know, a lot of people are looking to invest in those types of properties, in particular, if you're a business owner, uh, having the opportunity to maybe buy up a property and then lease out half of it or however much through, the, through uh, acquiring like an SBA loan. So, Raphael, um, what's the, I think, the number one secret right now for succeeding in commercial real estate um, in Louisville? And I think we talked a little bit about retail, a little bit about multifamily. Kind of give us what you're seeing on the ground there and what's your, what's your take on, on opportunities and deals. Yeah. So I think on the business generation side, uh, obviously technology has afforded us a lot of unique opportunities. I mean, I love the fact you're doing the podcast. I also have a podcast to YouTube, several meetups as well. So there's different nodes that you can put out there to be able to generate leads outside of the traditional, you know, prospecting, cold calling, not only not, not to say that that's not a great opportunity to be able to do that. And I, I still do have that in my repertoire, but there's so many other nodes you can create from a business, from a business standpoint in order to generate a significant amount of leads through, you know, mediums like YouTube podcasting, et cetera. As far as deal opportunities are concerned, I mean, we're seeing a lot of activity in the multifamily space. We, we have a pretty good industrial background here in Louisville. So, you know, a lot of people are looking to invest in those types of properties in particular, if you're a business owner, uh, having the opportunity to maybe buy up a property and then lease out half of it or however much through the, through uh, acquiring like an SBA loan is something that I've seen a lot of it in, in recent months and, and really over COVID. Um, and so those are just some of the things that I've seen. Uh, I don't know if you, you, you have anything particular more that you'd like to know about the area. No, just, just, I'm just curious on the, on the ground, the local ground in Louisville, right? I mean, you have places like, like Nashville, Tennessee, or, mm -hmm. you know, places, um, you know, Tampa Bay, Florida and, and, and Austin, Texas, and, and, you know, these, these, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, a lot of the migration from New York or California are going to these different areas. And I, I, I haven't heard much about Kentucky one way or the other. So I'm just curious on what's the, what's the temperature of the market? What's the kind of the migration patterns and uh, where do you, where do you see uh, some good opportunities? Yeah. So, I mean, we're definitely not experienced the same level of growth you, as you see in some of these other larger markets, but I think we're well positioned within the middle of the country to experience some of that growth in the near, near term. Uh, I think from a investment standpoint, we're well positioned in that our market is pretty affordable. You know, we're one of the, I think I saw an article the other day that said that Louisville is one of the top 20 cities from an affordability standpoint. So from a cost of living perspective, there, it, people can live here and, and, and have a pretty good life on not necessarily the, the highest salary, uh, as, as you can see in some of these other larger markets. So um, I think there's a unique opportunity for people who are looking to buy investment property in particular, because, you know, you can get closer to making the math work from a cash flow perspective, because I see, feel like a lot of these larger markets where you're seeing a lot of cash investment, cap rates are compressing and, you know, the cash flow almost doesn't even work. Uh, whereas in Louisville, I feel like a lot of investment properties cash flow pretty well. So, um, Excellent. I guess that, Affordab that would affordability, be affordability and, 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 and seeing some growth there. How about just the ability to build? Like if you, if someone wanted to build a hundred to 200, 300 units, what's the red tape like there in Louisville and what's, what would be some micro locations that you think are up and coming? Yeah. So again, it depends on the sector as, as you, as you identified. So there's certain sub cities within Louisville or subsectors within Louisville where there may be some contention, depending on what the project is. We have a, we have a, a parcel of land that we had listed for a while. We were, we were trying to encourage a developer to come down there and, and build affordable housing for, for veterans because it was located across the street from a veteran community. And so that was, uh, or the veteran, the veteran hospital, I should say. So that's some of the initiatives that we were pushing for just in that particular area. But there's a lot of opportunity in particular in workforce housing, affordable housing. Uh, and that's something that's really across the country. So, you know, there's various sectors of the city where, you know, there's, there's land that could be utilized to be able to develop some of these larger workforce housing communities. Um, and, and also the, on the industrial side, there's a lot of industrial activity. So you're seeing a lot of industrial developers starting building these massive 500 square foot facilities. And, you know, they're getting filled, which is, you know, the demand's there. So it's very interesting. Excellent. No, appreciate you sharing that.